Welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we're showing you how to refinish a coffee table. We've got the tabletop and we're just about to give it a sand. We want to get off all this sort of orangey finish and get down to a more natural looking wood. So here's the table. It's been sanded down to a 180 grit and we're just going to blow off the dust. We're finishing off by doing the last little bit by hand. Blow up your paper, make it nice and sharp. You really have to get into the fine detail. This is the part that takes all the patience. Like if we were actually finishing with stain and lacquer again, you would want to strip this with chemical stripper. So now we have it fully sanded. And we've got down all of the stain. Yeah, it's down to 220. And all of the stain is now out of the wood. So what we're going to do is, um, my husband is going to demonstrate for you um, how to see what this is going to look like clear coated. So this is lacquer thinner that we're using here. It's stinky. Don't use it inside. But we want to see this. Look at this top. There. Wow. Wipe it really quick. You can see scratches. You can see glue. You'll, this is exactly how your clear coat will show up. Now this is going to evaporate really quick. But that's your luck. If there's anything you don't like about it, this is your chance to sand it again. Or sand out scratches. It's looking good to my eye. What do you think? I like it. I can see if there were glue sewed up, say I made this table and there was glue joint or putty, it would all show up. And that's exactly what you'll see when you clear coat it. You know, you'll see that little bit of finish in the edges that we... I'll put a little bit more on the rag. Now you can do this with mineral spirit, but it'll take... So it'll take a long time to dry, so you can't go back and just sand really quickly. If you, with the lacquer thinner... I guess evaporate. that's taking the sanding dust off too yep. while you're at it. This is going to evaporate in minutes now. If I see a flaw or something, an area I don't like, wait five minutes, I can sand it. Now, if you wipe this with water and do the same thing, light coat of water, uh, you'll actually darken the wood a little bit. And when you clear coat, it'll stay a little bit darker. Or when you stain it, you've already made it a little bit darker. Pretty happy. I think everything yep. looks good. I'm very happy with that. Like you've got, you know, you can see the different pieces of wood and the color. That's the natural look of the cherry. Yeah, gorgeous. Like all the stain has been taken out. So I much prefer see. that to the glossy finish so, we had before. So you can see how much difference cherry has in the wood, dark to light. That's it's just a naturally beautiful wood. Yeah. But with the stain, you didn't see the differences so much. It looked very even. Yep. So this will be rustic now. Love it. Thank you. We've taken some hot soapy water and these are the tools of our trade. Some cotton swabs here. As you can see, we previously went over it just with a cloth, as Hubs is doing right now. And then to get into all these crevices, we're having to use some Q-tips. And especially down in here, where you really can't reach, we're using these monster Q-tips here, because that gets right in. They're made for electronics or... They're actually ideal for this purpose. We sanded all the loose rust off. We're not worried about restoring it, but painting all the rust. The clear coat will slow it down. Yeah, we're going to be using a trim clad clear coat. It's going to bring out the black beautifully. Slow down the rust. See, there's some rust right there, and there's quite a bit more on the bottom. But that's all been cleaned. It's just, uh, see, it'll come up nice. See when it's clear coated? Whatever it looks like now with water on it, that's how it'll look when it's clear coated. Yeah, so. there's just like touches like this that you really it's all been it's clean, hard to get but to. It's clean, but it's still a little rusty, but that's fine. Yeah, I can see like once you put water on it, it does come up black, so the clear coat is going to look phenomenal. Here's the wheel going. That's how you used to throttle a machine. And the cord would go around there. This 
so we'll clean the wheel watch. Yep, let's see this. Carefully. It looks like you're having too much fun. Yeah. We're getting ready to spray and we've got it set up. We've got the wheel up on some blocks here so that it doesn't tip while we're doing this. And we're going to use the spray nozzles on the can of spray because that'll prevent finger fatigue. Well, you have to get the right one. Yeah, exactly. This so, old style does not fit the new larger toss. This one does. So you, we have one for old style and the new style. Just simply get rid of this. This. We'll clip onto there like that. Mm -hmm. and now you can spray as if you're using a spray gun instead of finger. Take this up. So now we're spraying everything from the bottom first that we see, and then we're going to flip it over and spray everything from the top. Now when we spray these wheels, I don't want to mess it. Yet. We want to strip away for one side. I still want them to stick to the plastic. And just flip it over. So with something as intricate as this, short bursts of spray is better. You want to be sure you get good coverage everywhere. If you spray your wheels first, they might be dry enough by the time you flip it over. Partially dry. Yep, that's so I'm true. I'm doing everything from this side that I can see, even on a little bit of an angle, to get into all the edges. This is all going to get hit again from the top. See, light shot. You can even come on an angle like this, put it on the bottom. Wow, that's coming up really nicely. Looks beautiful so far. Stop for one sec, I just want to zoom in on this. Okay. Look how beautiful. The patina. Yeah, the rust. it's still got the patina and I love the rust. I never want anything to look too pristine. I, I just love seeing the age of the piece because it is vintage. Like it's never going to look new, and it shouldn't. Okay. So we kind of hit everything we can see from here. Turn the wheel a little bit. A little bit more. Of it. But I'll get it all from the top. Yeah. Let's we'll see. Let me get a little bit of this on my hands. I have to flip it over and line it up on these boards. It's on these boards because the wheel hits. So it sets up pretty quick. So it's already getting, it's already pretty dry. I can grab it. And set those up ahead of them. Okay. Now we're going to start again something like the inside, come on a little bit of angle. You'll get the top and you'll get the sides. And you can come from both sides. Just short bursts, different angles, try and get into everywhere. Same here again, a little bit from here. How are we doing for spray paint? Oh, uh, we've used about half of it. I think we'll have enough for one coat. I think that's all it needs. It's going to be used indoors, so I really don't see it needing two coats. Just to give it a touch of protection. If you want two coats, just follow the directions. It has to be done within an hour or after 48. If you leave it longer than an hour for your second coat and not 48, it can react and uh, start crinkling up on you. You get a reaction to it. You won't like that. All you can do is eyeball it and try and hit everything. You have to be a little bit finicky. It's looking pretty good from where I'm standing. I can't see anything that's still dry that you've missed. Yeah. And we're doing it in the garage because it's quite windy out here. 
today. You can see the plastic just ripping up. So by shooting it underneath first, you get a lot of spots you can't get from here. You don't see. I can't get under here right now, but I got it from the bottom. Dries quick enough. If you go around it a couple times, you shouldn't get any runs. The only thing I would concentrate on, maybe, is like the outer edges. Yeah. Like here. Yes, exactly. Put on there. And here. Just stir. Maybe just go around the four of them. I have a, a lot left of clear, but I think that's actually good. Again. Yep. So, okay, there we go. It's looking pretty good. This is satin, so it's going to dry down. It's a nice satin finish in about an it's hour. It's looking gorgeous. Yeah. Much better. Beautiful. It's fantastic. Good job, hon. Just a tip. You should always get two cans of the spray you're going to use. Sometimes these clog up, sometimes they just stop working altogether, and you may run out in a job, but you can always uh, save it for another job or maybe return it if you have your bill. But uh, I've had, you know, different ones fail for whatever reasons. So it makes it much easier having the trigger than using your finger. And you can aim it just like you're using a real spray gun. Okay, so let's let this dry and get going on the top. We just finished sanding our tabletop. We're going to embellish it with this stencil from Funky Junk's Old Sign Stencils. And I did some research on the base and it turns out that this is from um, 1910. It was originally a treadle sewing machine. So Old Sign Stencils puts out this number stencil here so that I can switch it from 1901 to 1910, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm actually going to remove the skirt of this table so that it's easier to work on. I'm attempting to remove the skirt all the way around the table and I can see that there's pocket holes in here with screws so I'm just going to be removing these. I think this is the last one. So let's just see if this is also glued down. Got a magnetic screwdriver here. I'm gonna see if I can catch this. It's a little difficult to get them out because of the way that the pocket holes are drilled. They just want to stay in. There we go. The magnetic part helps. Ah. Okay, so that looks loosened. Looks loosened on that end. I think there's one more hidden screw at the other end there, so I'm going to have to remove the cross member at the other end the way that I did here, and this should lift right off. Now all the screws are removed from the pocket holes, so before we move on, I suggest that you put all of the hardware into a Ziploc bag so nothing gets lost. That's important because nothing's more frustrating than wanting to put something back together when you're done and then not being able to find the hardware. So that's all going to get popped into a bag and then we're, I'm going to mark it with um, some green tape and a label here. And lastly, I'm just going to put these letter stickers onto the table base and then the skirt so that I know which way it goes back together and then we can lift this piece completely off. And now we can move on to stenciling the top. I'm just about ready to stencil. And I've got tape around the perimeter. I'm just gonna put my last little bit on here at the side. You wanna make sure you cover your registration marks just in case you accidentally come over. You don't wanna be stenciling those onto your work.
Okay, so I also want to point out that I've covered over the last two letters of the 1901 because I am going to customize it to say 1910 because that is the actual circa of this piece. So here I've got some um, breakthrough paint in a color called Carbon Copy. I'm just going to give it a shake. This is black, but it's kind of a gray black, so it's not quite as stark as a black black would be. I'm just going to pour a little bit out, and a little goes a long way. I'm just going to start with that. Make sure when you're pouring out of any container that you wipe it so that you can get the container open again. Nothing worse than having to drill through the top. So I'm going to start with that little bit. I'm going to cap it off. There's the amount that I poured. I'm back with another stencil brush. I was going to use a number 10, which would give me really good coverage. It's big enough to cover the entire width of the letters, whereas this is a little smaller. But maybe it's a good compromise because I do have smaller letters here. So we'll see how this goes. Now, because this is new, it is going to tend to shed. So, just give it a good run through with your fingers. Try to get any loose bristles out. Now, I did forget to cover these registration marks, so before we go ahead, I'm just going to do that. I don't want to have triangles in the middle of my beautiful stencil here. So let's cover those, get this out of the way. Before you start, be sure to clear your area of anything that's going to be distracting. So I'm just going to dip the bristles in, just offload it right here. And I do want to show you one trick. So we're going to offload it onto paper towels. Try to get it as dry as you can, because you don't need to have a wet brush. If it is wet, it does tend to bleed underneath, and that's exactly what you don't want. So sometimes you can't really tell how dry it is, so what I like to do is just test it out on a paint stick. And that seems good. I don't see a lot of runs. It's just wet enough. So I'm going to go left to right, let's just see how this goes. You can pounce and you can swirl, it's really up to you. If you want to get into the corners, you can pounce. Now I can see this is going to be light. And I can see the wood showing through. So it's up to you as to whether you want to do two coats or one. What I'll do is I'll check it after I'm done and see what I prefer. Just make sure that you keep the tape on some of the areas so that you can tape it back down again if you do want to make it darker. Just eyeball it as you go and make sure you've got good coverage, especially in the corners, so that they're really defined. Now let's see if I can get away with one more coat of paint here. It is getting dry. And as I said, it is better to have it as dry as possible. Because you don't want bleed through. So the drier the better. If you're a regular reader of Birds of a Feather, you might recognize this stencil. As you can see, I have used it before. I used it on a milk can, and that was a really tricky surface, so I did not use a stencil brush for that one. I showed you a technique on how to stencil on really difficult, bumpy surfaces. That had a lot of dents and dings. This one is perfectly flat. So it's really ideal for using the stencil brush. Now here, with the cue, because you have such thin bridges, you want to be careful with your swirling. You don't want to lift that bridge. 
and get paint underneath. So just ensure that you've got your fingers down and that the stencil is really good and flat. And this is probably where it's best to pounce it so that you don't accidentally lift those bridges up. Now I'm just going to reposition a little bit and get this finished. Again, I'm just going to make sure it's good and dry on the paint stick before I go to the work. And just continue to get this curly cue here. I do see something there. I'm just going to move that. I don't tend to wash my stencils in between using them. I don't find it to be a big deal. But you certainly can do that. Now right here I can see I'm not quite getting in there. I think I'm going to like this faded effect. I don't know that I'm going to want to do it any darker than that. As you can see, a little goes a really long way, like I've hardly used any of that. I'm just offloading that onto paper towels making sure it's good and dry, going to the paint stick, and then I'll come in and at first just try to concentrate on the center of the letter. That also helps with paint bleed. Then once you've offloaded the majority into the middle of the letter, you can come back and do the edges. Again, I'm concentrating on the middle Then I'm going to come back and do my edges. I do want to mention that when you are stenciling, I'm using a very light touch, like I'm barely pushing down on the bristles. You just want the very tips to be in contact with the work. That's another tip for preventing paint bleed underneath. Okay, last letter for antiques. I'm going to dip back into my paint. Offload onto the paper towels, check it out on the paint stick, good to go. As you're doing the S, just make sure you've got your finger on the center there so that you don't accidentally lift it. Just put some downward pressure on that. And if you see anywhere that's looking just a little bit light, you can just come back in. The top is done. I'm going to proceed to doing and collectibles and established in 19 and then at the end we're going to lift the tape and we're going to add our circuit date which is 1910. And again I just want to reiterate that you're using a very light touch. I'm barely pressing down with these bristles and when you notice that it's getting too dry just dip back into your paint And be sure to offload. And if you want, you can check on your paint stick. That's very dry, so I've barely picked up any paint there. I just want to come back over the L anyways. So for these, it's just a combination of swirling and pouncing, just to be sure that you get those sharp defined corners. Okay, I'm a little dry there. I'm going to dip back into the paint. Okay. Before you move on, just eyeball and make sure that you've got all those corners defined. So now I'm going to finish the very bottom and then we're going to be done. So I'm going to lift one end just to show you how the letters are looking. You know, I honestly don't think I want it any darker than this. It looks quite lovely. So I'm going to peel that right up. So I'm going to set this stencil aside 
because we're done with this. And then we're going to come back in with these numbers and we're going to finish that off. So I just realized that I'm literally just transposing the 0, 1 for the 1, 0. So I've just laid my stencil back down and I've just got it lined up with the other letters. I'm just going to come in and do the one. Okay, the one is done. I'm just going to give that one second to dry. In the meantime, I'm just going to lift this carefully. So I've got 19, 1, and I need to add the zero. That's the beauty of Breakthrough. It dries extremely fast. So to line up the zero, I'm just going to really eyeball this so that it looks good. Okay, so I'm going to go for the zero. That's looking good. Let's carefully peel this back. And voila! We've got antiques and collectibles established 1910. Let me just bring the camera back around so that you can see this. And there we go. Looks amazing. So when we come back, we are going to complete the skirt of the table and then put it all back together. I've got the Argyle stencil set up and I'm holding them on vertically with these clamps. And I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but I also have some sheet acetate over every other diamond. So here, here, and here. And that's so that I don't get the black onto the next space because I'm going to alternate colors. So I am going to start with the black, holding it down, and I'm offloading most of the paint in the center before I move to the sides. And if you can't quite get into the sharp corners, just give it a little bit of a tap. Pounce it until you see that the corners are solidly colored. And that's it for that one. So I'm gonna move on to the next. So I forgot to mention that when I applied the stencil onto the vertical surface here that I did center it onto the piece so that I get even coverage. So I'm just going to lift off these acetate pieces and we can release the clamps. And there we have it, our first set of diamonds. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move this along to the very end, as so. And we're going to continue. I'm just getting set up for my second set of diamonds. And I've got my pieces of acetate here. I'm going to cover the spot that I don't want to paint. And then I'm going to clamp it. And just make sure it's not covering the edge of the diamond that you do want to paint. There we go. Great. These smaller clamps are great for holding on both the acetate and the stencil itself. So I've done the sides exactly the same as I did the longer sides. And once again, I'm going to remove the acetate. Unclip the clamps. And then what I'm gonna end up doing is moving this along just one more so that I can stencil right in that corner and get a full pattern. I've repositioned my stencil. I've got my clear acetate over the part that we're gonna be painting white. 
And I'm just going to come in and do the edge. But just to show you, I've got some green tape around the corner there just to protect that. Um, because I will not get this full pattern coming along that edge there. It's just going to be partial. So I'm going to dip into my paint. Just going to test it out on my paint stick. Just make sure it's not too wet. I'm going to offload it just a touch so that it's dry. And then I'm going to come in and do the end grain here. And that'll just finish off that row. So one corner is now done. I'm just going to peel that back. When you're finished stenciling and you remove the clear acetate, just clip it with its clamp and then set it aside so that it's ready to go for next time. Now that my black diamonds are complete, we're moving on to coloring the white ones. And this time, instead of covering this spot, we're going to be covering the black, which is pieces of acetate. They're just hanging right over the black diamonds that we just completed. And I've got some white paint in this container. It's a little bit thin because I'm going to see if I can get it to look just a touch transparent. And because the paint is a little bit thinned, I am going to use this paint stick trick and just swirl it on and see if it's too wet and it is a little bit runny so I'm going to go back to the paper towels and offload it. Then I'm coming back to the paint stick and that's quite a bit better. So now I'm going to go to the work and starting in the middle just in case it is still a little bit wet. I'm going to work out to the sides. And I am noticing I'm getting some bristles in the work, so I'm going to try to get that out. There. And just go over that again. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Black and white diamonds are now complete. And it's time for the next step. I now have my overlay stencil on and because I'm doing a vertical surface and I have to clamp it, I had to make my own registration mark. As you can see right here, the registration mark falls in the middle of the stencil. So I had to redraw the registration to be closer to the top so that I could get my clamps on. So I've got my registration just in pencil here and I can see perfectly through and it's going to work just fine. I'm now ready to stencil and I just want to point out that on the white diamonds I previously used a color called Chantilly Lace. I'm going to be using a slightly different color called Icicle White so that it shows up against the white and of course against the black. I've got a little bit of paint poured out into a plastic lid here. And for this overlay, I'm going to be using um, a much smaller stencil brush to get into the overlay stripes. I'm going to dip in. I've got three layers of paper towels here. And to ensure that it's dry, I'm just going to go to my paint stick here and just make sure. And that looks good to me. So I'm ready to start. My brush is dry. I'm going to dip back into the paint. I'm going to check once again on my paint stick. That's a little too dry. So let's go back into the paint. That's a little too wet. And that's perfect. Just use a very light touch when you're swirling. You don't want to press down so hard that the paint is going to ooze right underneath your lines. But you do have to put a little bit of pressure so that you do make contact with your surface. You can also try pouncing. And 
And when you notice the brush is getting too dry, just dip right back into the paint. And test it out. And then come back to the work where you left off. Before I move on, I'm just making sure that I've got the top of this and the bottoms too. Just make sure you've got good coverage everywhere. I think that looks pretty good. Let's just lift it and see how that's looking. I'm just gonna put a clamp here to hold it as I peel it back. And I'm actually gonna add just one more here, just in case I have to reposition and touch up. And there's a sneak peek. It's looking beautiful. Okay, so let's take that off fully. And there we go. Now I'm going to come back and move the stencil along and continue on in the same fashion. <laughs> 